Good morning, everybody. I'm recording this video ahead of time um, to be uh, shown for you folks on the morning of Tuesday, uh, October 20th. Um, as you know, Gail and I are going to be uh, away to Gail's mother's funeral, Mary Alice's funeral on Monday. Not 100% sure what's going on, as whether, whether we'll, I'll be back on Tuesday morning um, or not. Uh, so just in preparation, I've gone ahead and I'm recording this for you and Clint will po post it up. So if I'm in town um, Tuesday morning, I can sleep in. Hey, praise God, praise God. Uh, but whatever. Um, and I, I apologize, I'm getting a little twisted around because I'm preparing different devotions and I'm recording this one on uh, on Saturday morning. And then in just a few minutes, when I get done with this one, I'm going to go ahead and post the one online live for Saturday morning. So uh, my my messages are going to are starting to get scrambled around. Plus, I'm working on my message for uh, Mary Alice's funeral as well as Sunday morning's message. So uh, pray for me. Yeah, we might need that. So with that thought, let's go ahead and let's start this one with a prayer. We I haven't done enough praying uh, for these devotions and one can never pray enough. So let's open up this one with a prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for for the beauty of, of Mary Alice, um, uh, whose funeral we had yesterday. Um, dear Lord, and we just thank you for her life and all that she meant to her loved ones. We ask that each and every one of us, those of us in her family, and also those that she's touched here in Lake City, uh, that they might remember her and all of the joy and the, the beauty that she that she shared so freely with you and, and with your creation. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day, and we ask that you... Uh, uh, guide each and every one of us to be a true and real blessing to someone today. Amen. All right. So today's message, we're looking at Luke. Uh, we're in the ninth chapter. We've jumped ahead, even though in a minute I'm going to go back to the eighth chapter. We're in the ninth chapter right now. And we're going to look at the first uh, verses one through six. So this is what the bite we're going to bite off this morning. Um, and this is the mission of the 12. Jesus is is sending out the 12. It's a, so it's not the Great Commission. Don't confuse it with that. But he's during he's still alive. He's sending them out. So chapter 9, uh, 1 through 6. Then Jesus called the 12 together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. He said to them, Take nothing for your journey, no staff, nor bag, nor bread, nor money, not even an extra tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. Wherever you do not, wherever they do not welcome you, as you are leaving that town, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They departed and went through the villages, bringing the good news and curing diseases everywhere. Okay, this is a wonderful message. Um, it's talking about that God will provide. Um, and that's usually how we look at this and usually how we how we address this uh, about that we are not to, you know, we, we have to have faith. And we've been talking about faith, you know, the, the calming the storm and the healing uh, of the, the uh, garrison demoniac and the healing of the woman that's bleeding. Um, th those are all things that are done through through faith. Um, and we have to have the faith that God will provide for us. And this is generally the, the angle that's taken at this bit of scripture here. And, and that's God's provision. And that's a very real and true and certain message that this is giving us. Um, I, I want to take a, a little different twist on this, uh, perhaps. Um, you know, Gail and I just recently, you know, we... we not this last week, but the two weeks prior, we were on vacation. And one of the things that Gail and I do on vacation that most sane people do not do is we don't really have a hard and fast um, agenda. We don't have this, this curriculum of the things that we want to do, our itinerary, I guess I should say. We don't have it all nailed down. Some people have the every 15 minutes allocated and we'll leave here and we'll travel to there and all of that. And Gail and I don't do that. We're more fast and loose. And in fact, there's been times when we've taken vacations and we're kind of getting in the car and go, okay, we're going north, south, east, or west. Um, and now we didn't do that this time so much. We wanted to go to Keokuk. And from Keokuk, we just kind of felt our way out um, and figure out where we wanted to go. We knew we were going to head back up north um, along the Mississippi. And that was pretty much it. And we wanted to see what sites came along that we could stop and enjoy and 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 take in. And uh, that's kind of the way we do our our vacationing and and for some people that just doesn't work really well but for us it works well but the point is there is that 
here, God's sending them out without any presumption of what they are supposed to do, really. Uh, he's going to take care of it. Things are going to come up. The Spirit's going to guide you as you go, and you need to listen to the Spirit. And where the Spirit's taking you, that's where you need to go. Oftentimes, if we have this predetermination of what we want to do and where we want to go, and we, we charge forward to that, we're going to charge right by what God really wants us to do. And we've got our earthly mission focused on, but we're not listening to the Holy Spirit. And we're reminded of in Acts 16 where, where Paul is is wanting to go to Asia, isn't he? He says, I'm going to go to Asia, take God's word to Asia. And, but he's prevented from doing that. Instead, he's called to Macedonia. And unlike his normal uh, modus operandi would be to go to the synagogues, he gets there and there's no synagogue. And so he goes down by the river and lo and behold, he finds the And uh, this is God taking care of the mission. If we just go in and, and listen and, and, and try to find our way through, uh, the message will come out. The messengers may oftentimes be clumsy and, and imperfect, but guess what? That's the reality of, of life is we're clumsy and imperfect. I'm the, the most clumsy and imperfect of all. Um, oh, we got Annabelle here. Um, so Annabelle is here with us to, uh, to uh, have this message. Anyway, um, the other, so, so if we have this predetermined thing, we're not going to be listening. Um, and, and oftentimes when I'm preaching, that's, that's kind of the way it is. I may come into a sermon with a with an idea of what I'm going to talk about, and as I'm going through the through the reading, sometimes uh, the Holy Spirit says, "No, you need to talk about this part." And uh, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm my my sermon goes a different direction than where I was planning to go. But I have to be listening for that Spirit to talk to me. Um, it may be rough, it may be coarse, but hopefully, it's effective. Um, the other thing is, is that that here, you know, don't pack a bag, don't don't, don't pack up food, don't try to figure. I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need eight meals or twenty meals or whatever. And I need this many pair, you know, changes of clothes and start planning and start trying to prepare and uh, and and we get wrapped up in that. And oh, and by the way, I need to read this book and that book, and I need to go and do, need to do this, and I need to prepare. You know, and we get we can never be ready enough to do the ministry of God on our own. So the idea is that we're not trying to to we're not trying to rely on our own earthly intuition. Um, we can never, just like you can never be ready to be a parent, you can never be ready enough on your own to uh, to go into God's ministry and to do God's work. Uh, but you don't have to be, folks. That's the point. God will provide. God will give you what to say. He even says he's going to give them the power and the authority. He's going to give them what they need to say and what they need to do. And it may be imperfect because there's nothing in this world is perfect. He's using an imperfect messenger. So therefore, the message is imperfect, but it's effective. And that's the point. And so we just have to have faith. We have to trust that God will provide. That with, with God, what God, what God wants to happen will happen. We just need to be there to be the instrument of that thing. So with that, I'm going to let you, let you go. I hope you have a very blessed Tuesday. Um, if I'm not here in the morning, I'll be here shortly, shortly later on in the day. So with that, I will see you all in the morning. All right. Have a very blessed day. And of course, as always, be a blessing to someone today. Bye-bye.